Hello, dear friends. It's so good to be here again. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, I really appreciate you. Thank you for your love and your support right here. And uh, don't forget to like our videos. Don't forget to share. And don't forget to support us as much as you can. And yes, this is Saffron Media. And we are here to give you the best, the most trending, exciting, reliable, and authentic happenings in Nigeria, especially in the area of politics and many more. And yes, remember that Unamdi Kanu has been in the DSS custody for some weeks now. And, uh, you know, the uh, UK actually uh, promised to be of assistance to Unamdi Kanu's release. But unfortunately, hmm, the DSS stops Kanu from signing letter from the UK consular assistance. You know, I don't know what the, why these people had to stop him from signing the letter. But whatever their intentions are, I believe that very soon it will become, you know, fertile. But all in all of this, what is his lawyer doing and what are the uh, Southeastern people doing? Because this is the time he needs their support the most. Those who are actually uh, supporting Biafra, supporting IPOB and the likes, this is the best time for them to really support him because if they don't support him, this will likely be the end of Unam Kanu, and I hope that will not be the case. But anyway, I'll bring you more details about all of this shortly, but please ensure you subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to share and also uh, turn on the notification bell. Okay, dear friends, without further ado, it says that the Department of State Services has stopped the tanked leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Khan, from signing a consular assistance form by the United Kingdom. A member of Kanu's legal team, Aloy Ejimako, disclosed this in a statement on Monday after visiting the IPOB leader in the DSS custody. Kanu, who was born on September 25, 1967, is a holder of Nigerian and British passports. Upon his rearrest and extradition from a foreign country, he was arraigned before Justice Binta Iyako of the Federal High Court in Abuja for terrorism related charges and has since been remanded in the custody of the Department of State Services. He had jumped bail before fleeing to the United Kingdom. It was earlier reported that the British government expressed readiness to provide consular assistance for Kanu, but need him to assent to the assistance by signing some forms. Head of Communications, British High Commission in Abuja, Dean Hollock, had told us that the British High Commission in Abuja is currently in the process of seeking clarification from the Nigerian government about the circumstances of the arrest of Unamdi Kanu. With regard to any questions about whether the British High Commission are providing assistance in this case, we can confirm that the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office stands ready to provide consular assistance. Subsequently, Ejimako delivered two forms to the IPOB leader last Wednesday during a visit to the office of the secret police. But in a statement sent to a correspondent on Monday, the lawyer said the forms were returned to him unsigned. Ejimako's statement was titled, Summary of My Visitation with a Client, Mazi Namdikanu, on Monday, 19th of July. It read, Last Saturday, when I visited Mazi Unamdikanu, I expressed strong concerns about the inordinate delay in having Kanu sign the two forms I had taken to the DSS for Kanu's signature some days before. Both forms relate to affirming his consent to consular and diplomatic interventions by the United Kingdom and High Commission in Nigeria. Surprisingly, the forms were returned to me unsigned. Let, it, let me make it clear that the day I took the forms to the DSS, the officers on location were amendable to Kano signing them until somewhere along the line they tarried and decided to send it to the legal unit for vetting. So my sense is that it's the legal unit of the DSS that disapproved of Kano signing the forms for reasons that were not given to me. As a lawyer, I don't see any legal advantage the government of Nigeria stands to gain 
by blocking Kanu from signing those forms. The forms are but a mere routine in matters like this. Instead of adv any advantage, the refusal will help fuel the notion that the government of Nigeria is deliberately isolating Kanu from having consular and diplomatic access to the United Kingdom. It does not comport with the best traditions of fundamental fairness that a detainee is being denied access to resources that will assist him in his defense. This is one of the things that will count in our reckoning as this matter continues to fold. For these reasons, I am compelled to call on the British High Commission in Nigeria to banish every red tape and exert the full weight of its diplomatic clout in gaining immediate access to Kanu. This is especially important given the prospects of better welfare, including adequate medical care for Mazi and Amdi Kanu. Further, the prompt intervention of the High Commission will remain will mean that Kanu will have another layer of human contact in addition to his legal team, who are the only ones currently allowed to see him. Well, uh, like it is obviously said here, that uh, we really don't know what the government would gain in all of this, because now they, had, they are trying to stop Namdi Kanu from gaining access to the consular of the United Kingdom in Nigeria. And this alone actually shows that they are out to really destroy him. Because if uh, for any reason he should be given that assets, 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 especially now that, uh, you know, there's a lawyer right there that um, uh, is helping with his case. And if there's really no case yet, yet, it means he's not yet guilty. It is just the states who have actually said that uh, he has committed an offense. It has not actually been proven. And with all of them stopping this, it actually shows that they have a hidden agenda behind all of this, that they don't want Kanu to be released in any way. And at the end of this, I know this will not end well, even for the government and also in Nigeria, because at the end of the day, this will become another issue entirely that could cause you know chaos in most of the uh, states in the country because it will be written in history that something like this happened and this government was responsible for that well guys you've heard it all i hope kanu gaze is, is gain his freedom really soon and i hope that uh, the british high commission will be able to help him out at the end of the day but whatever the case i hope that he is freed at the end of the day so guys that is it thank you so much for staying tuned whatever you have to say about this please drop it in the comment section and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up do have a pleasant time bye for now